So apparently the real life Martha from Baby Reindeer, who happens to be named Fiona Harvey, is going to be doing meet and greets now, where you can get either an autograph, a selfie, or maybe even a new stalker. And celebrities are now virtue signaling on social media by celebrating their ever-gooning celibacy online. And we're finally going to ask the question, is tipping culture getting out of control? All of that and more later on Lost Ox Media, the podcast. Say you lost. Uh, well, is there an ox input? Yes! Oh my gosh! It's the ox button. You are lost. He's arguing with media. Digital media. Instagram media. No media whatsoever. Lost Ox Media. Bruh. So have you seen Baby Reindeer, Andy? I have not. You haven't? No, I've heard about it. If I'm not mistaken, it's on Netflix, isn't it? Yeah, I haven't I haven't seen it either. No, I, like, I saw it come up, you know, when you open the app. I saw that, but I was like, eh, maybe later. Well, have you, so, have you seen any of, like, the news? Have you been reading anything, like? The only thing I uh, touched up on it was, um, what's his name? Uh, Piers Morgan is going to interview the real... Baby Reindeer, I guess, is the their nickname or whatever, something like that. Yeah. Um, but that's as much as I've gotten. He ended up, like, interviewing her, and apparently she wants to sue. So do you, like, do you know any of this, the whole, what it's about? Not at all. I honestly, like, honest to God, as soon as I heard Baby Reindeer, instantly thought of Christmas until I saw the, I guess, the thumbnail of the, the movie, and I'm like, well, it doesn't look holiday related at all yeah it's a little it's a little out there so ba- <laughs> so basically it's it's like a, a true story it's about like a comedian and he i guess supposedly he has this like stalker who's this woman and the whole that's that's it with in a nutshell without giving away anything okay it's just basically his trials and tribulations of having this woman as his stalker, right? Okay. And uh and then right after it aired, um it it says it in there, I guess, like from what I've heard and read, like every episode says this is based on a true story. But people still after the fact were like, "Wait, that was real?" Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> but the the real big twist, there's a couple big twists, but one of them is that the actor that played in it was the actual guy. Like, it wasn't just like, oh, we did... Like, it was a satire, like, series. Uh-huh. It wasn't a documentary. But he played himself. Like, he was the actor in it. And it was him. In real life. So, <laughs> immediately after it happened... uh. The the real girl, you know how these people are on the internet, right? Yeah, of course. They're all like, we gotta find them. Like, we gotta, <laughs> like you know what I mean? They start clicking and clacking. They're like, we gotta get them. So, everyone starts hunting this woman down. And they find out who she is, and then she starts going on Facebook. And is just running amok. She's like, oh, I'm gonna, and they're British. The whole thing's British. So, you know, she's talking all. Chip, chip, cheer, yo. I'm gonna sue him. I'm gonna sue Netflix. Yeah. You bloody goddamn bet believe it. <laughs> so, she starts going wild on Facebook. And then from there, you know, of course, Pierce Morgan, he's such a slime ball. You, you, you have to kind of love him, though, like, for what he does and how he does it. Mm-hmm. Like, he's... Yeah, I agree with you. He's a slimo, but at the same time, you're like, man, he's such he he's a like natural troll to a certain extent. He kind of is. When I've never I've never had it put in that perspective, and I can respect that. I hate the whole like gotcha journalism. He kind of reminds me of like Don Lemon a little bit. You know, he's like always asking questions to be like, oh, there you said it. You're racist. Like, you know what I mean? You're like, fuck off, man. But. I will admit, it, when you put it in that perspective, he kind of is like a natural troll. And the clips that come out of him are pretty goddamn top-notch. <laughs> so, like, 
you know, obviously she starts running amok on Facebook. Right. And then Pierce is like, oh, I got to get in there. I got to get in there. And oddly enough, like, I already did an episode where I had a clip from one of Pierce Morgan's shows because he had that crackhead Barney girl on there. Oh, yeah, yeah. I saw that one. So then he has this crazy chick. So Pierce is just pulling them, you know what I mean? One crazy broad from, you know, here and uh, one over there. So he gets this girl on and she starts going just wild. So open up that first one. I want to just read a, a little bit about it. So in this article, it says nightclub slammed for grotesque meet and greet with real Martha from Baby Reindeer. So now this chick is doing meet and greets, brother. Like, she is riding the goddamn wave here. It's insanity. What were you going to say? No, that it, it's it's kind of crazy when you think about it. Like, when Netflix, I mean, I think it's Netflix who is the main top dog in this uh, and the whole streaming and, uh, you know, documentary stuff where when they put a documentary out there or a... Um, like you said, a satire series of someone who did something wrong years ago, they become famous in a weird way. You know, like, um, what's this guy's name? Um, I, I can't remember the name of the show. It's a Netflix show. He was murdering guys after he like hooked up with them. I know you know who I'm talking about. He was a guy that was murdering other guys, like some gay yeah. dude that was just running amok? Yeah, like he was into guys and is he just fucking them to death? Like, no. <laughs> what was it? <laughs> Find it. I'm I'm very curious. As to, it was a gay guy, you say, yeah. right? Let me get this straight. A gay man who's murdering other men after he fucks them. Yeah, not exactly. <laughs> it's just the way you put it. I'm like, I never thought of it that way, but <laughs> he's he's like the no. gay Dexter. Uh, man, was it was too I. It had to be two years ago. He sounds like some guy from, like, the Deep South with, like, a pent-up, like, gayness inside of him that he's been running from his whole life. He, like, finds so He's, like, that. that's, like, the gay Dexter. He's, like, a southern redneck who's, like, secretly gay, and he's been running from those feelings his whole life. And then he finds men in bars, and he hooks up with them, and he's, like, gotcha, and he fucking kills them. He's, like, I knew you were fucking gay, you <laughs> He's like, damn it. Okay, here he is. Uh, no, not Peter Maxwell. What's his name? You're not talking no. about Bates Motel by any chance, are you? No. I, I Like, I would know exactly what you're talking about. I, like, as soon as they hear Dahmer, damn it. Oh, God. So you're, comp- wait. So how are, we got, now we got to get, we got to round back yeah, to the. Back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what, so, what. What I was saying is that, like, when when Netflix comes out with these specific shows about these serial killers or these stalkers or whatever it is that these people did, they come out with these shows or documentaries, whatever it is, about them, and they become, like, super famous, like, super famous, where people, like you just said, um, the real baby reindeer is doing meet and greets. You know, and people were doing the same thing with Dahmer. Like, they wanted to, like, you know, they were sending in letters. They wanted to, you know, get to know him, get to hook up with him, whatever. Yeah. Like the same thing happened with, um, I forget, I'm I'm going to blank on his name, but he's Ted, Ted something. Ted Bundy. Ted yes. Bundy. Same thing. Yeah, yeah. They were all getting uh, getting letters when they yeah. were in the, in the brink. You know what I mean? Yeah, and it's, it's insane. It's crazy. It, yeah, it doesn't surprise me. So, so... Let's let's read this. A nightclub in Coventry has sparked backlash for advertising a meet and greet with the real Martha from Baby Reindeer. The Netflix hit has become one of the platform's most watched series and has been hailed a brutally honest masterpiece about two very broken individuals. Baby Reindeer explores writer and comedian Richard Gadd's relationship with his female stalker, stalker Martha Scott, played by Jessica Gunning. So, uh, I guess that, that, let's scroll down a little bit. That doesn't really tell us much about the meet and greet. So, let's see. Now, Coventry Club Casbah has taken in one step further with locals calling the move grotesque. 
A personal appearance by Fiona Harvey, a.k.a. Martha of Baby Reindeer, the advertisement read on Facebook. She will be signing autographs, taking selfies, and she may also take a lucky reindeer home to hang her curtains. Dude, that's the advertisement? Like, that's a quote from the advertisement, dude? That's insane. That's like, okay, uh, hey, come and meet this girl. You might get an autograph. You can take some selfies. And if you're lucky, she might stalk you for the next six months to two years. And you will never be able to get rid of her, and she will completely ruin your life and everything else that you hold dear to yourself. Let's uh, scroll back up a little bit. Let me see. Back to where we were. No, no, we we were oh, just... Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, right here. Many have also speculated the meet and greet is too absurd to be real and that it had to be a hoax. However, the ad inevitably sparked backlash with one writing... I hope this is a joke. She shouldn't have a platform. End of quote. Added another. Imagine if it was a guy who had claims of stalking a woman when this nightclub was paying him to sign autographs. This is absolutely sick. Obviously, the owner slash manager of the club who arranged this has some serious issues as well. Which is, look at this fucking ass. <laughs> Can you zoom in on that? This advertisement is just... Fucking dude, she looks insane. She looks insane, dude. And the the, the girl that played her, because I seen... I walked in one day, and my roommate was watching it. Mm-hmm. I walked in, I was like, what the fuck is going on here? And the, the girl who was playing this woman looked equally insane. And this person... Uh, that was talking shit about it earlier kind of made a good point when they're like, imagine if it was a guy, you know what I mean? Oh, 1,000%. The guy would not be at all celebrated. It'd be completely shunned to the depths of hell. It would be a, it would be a world record how fast they locked this guy up. <laughs> if they made a series about him and he wasn't caught already... They would. He would be the fastest. It would not even forty eight hours. It'd be forty eight minutes. They they'd have this guy locked up so goddamn quick. They wouldn't give him a meet and greet. I'll tell you that mm-hmm. right now. Mm-hmm. And I'll I'll tell you the the fact that there's even a meet and greet. It's working. It's working, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. It's working, people out there at home listening. Because I'll tell you right now. I'm going to watch it. I'm going to, I'll probably end up watching it tonight because this is just too good. This news is just uh, too good. This, this woman is absolutely out of her mind. And the fact that anybody's even given her a platform is, is none, is not surprising at all. As my man Andy said earlier, these, these serial killers, these stalkers, they get glorified by platforms like Netflix. And I'm here for it. I'm here. I'm watching every episode. I watched Dahmer like four times. So, you know, they glorify these these uh these people that are doing this outrageous stuff and then people fall, you know, in love with them or they, they become huge fans. And it's it's a little it's a little wild. But uh I wanna see exactly how crazy Miss uh, Martha actually is. Uh, Andy, go to that clip real fast. I want to... Nah, double-click it. Yeah. He does so. have 350 voice messages. I know that he doesn't. And it's your voice. He doesn't. And everyone can now hear your voice. Unless he was taping me in the Holy Arms. Or or he just kept them on his phone. I didn't phone him. Look, pause like, that. Fits, but no, no, I'm not, I'm not. Look at that. <laughs> she... <laughs> The fucking look on her face. It says it all. She has those she has those eyes, dude. Those <clears throat> those insane eyes. I I do like I do like Piers Morgan's silence and his blank stare was like right, 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 right. Yeah. He's sitting there at this his little he's like, Oh yeah? Oh yeah <laughs> with this British eye. I can't even he's so he's like 
what, what, what? You, you did phone him. You did phone him, yeah. You did phone him. I love that. And and he caught her red handed. Yeah. He's like, it's your voice. It's your voice on the. It's your voice on the voicemails. Yeah, yeah. With, and and she's like, just like giving him this beady ass. I hate. I, I'm making fun of him, but he's actually very calm. You know, he's like, oh, it's your voice on there, and she's just immediately going on the defensive. It's insanely funny. Like, her her whole demeanor, she's like, well, I didn't phone him unless he was recording me. And he's yeah. obviously like, well, he could have just kept the voicemails. I mean, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, this isn't, this isn't a, you know, rocket science technology here, folks. You know? Exactly. So let's, let's play this again. I'm say, I mean, what? No. So it's your point that you are you challenging him to reveal this evidence? No, I I just would I would challenge him to leave me alone. Because you're calling him a liar, and you're calling Netflix a complice. I didn't use those words. I said the the, the story and the play, the the mm-hmm. Netflix show is not true. No, but if they say that you sent forty one thousand emails, well, they, they are okay. Exactly. Hit that forty one thousand emails. Listen, listen, folks. Listen, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to tell you real quick. Right, it, these places like Google, stuff like that. When when the when they start subpoenaing stuff for for public record to figure this kind of stuff out to fact check this, Google cannot just fabricate those those numbers, folks. They can't do it. So if they got forty one thousand emails. Registered to this woman. Hey, that sounds about as concrete as anything. Any lawyers that are willing to pick up this case that she's will, that she's trying to file on Netflix and this guy is absolutely out of their mind. All right, so let's hit play again. Wrong. All oh, seven hundred forty-four. They're please. completely wrong. So they are lying. They are lying. Yes, okay, yeah, in effect, he is lying and they are lying. And in order for a dramatization to be true, it's got to be, you know, the only defences are very tasked, I'm telling the truth, um, or um, the whole drama needs to be true. They have built it as a true story, so has he, and it's not. Jesus. I, I love how she tried to, like, bring it around. Like, at the end, she tried to compose herself. Be like, it's not, it's not. Uh, British people talk so funny to me, man. That's, that is, is just so hilarious. I can't believe it. I'm, I'm going to watch it. I'm watching tonight, folks. Two a night. It's like the, uh, the only thing that can stop a stalker like this is complete abstinence, folks. It's, it's the only way. It's the only way. It's just like God intended. You need complete abstinence, ladies and gentlemen. And and there are certain celebrities out there who are practicing abstinence, and they are going into the public eye and completely patting themselves on the back because of it. I, I kind of find it amusing. Open that up real quick, Andy. So you got this article here now that says, Julia Fox reveals reasons why she's been celibate for over two years. And uh, hopefully it's nothing as uh, twisted and demented as this baby reindeer situation. So let's scroll down. I want to read some of this. Uh, Julia Fox has revealed that she's been celibate for over two years. The uncut gem star, 34, famously dated Kanye West for six weeks in 2022, which I'm not going to lie. I did not even know that. That must she she must, she probably wanted to check herself into an insane asylum. That was when... Kanye was on the bullshit. Uh, The romance came amid a messy row between the musician and Kim Kardashian, who filed for a divorce from him the year prior. All right. uh, That stuff is boring. That has nothing to do with why she's celibate. Unless, imagine that's the reason. She's like, I dated Kanye for six weeks, and I was like, (laughs) fuck men. This is too much. Kanye's in the house spouting off shit about Jews and stuff like that. She's like, "I have, my family's not Jewish. Stop. He's just going <laughs> off. He's like, the new, new Yeezy line, the Adidas. She's like, this guy is going to fucking drive me insane. 
She just swears off men altogether. I would imagine six weeks of Kanye would do that to you. I'm not going to lie. I would imagine. Let's scroll down. So Fox was asked why the one boyfriend she doesn't describe sex with is Kanye in her memoir. She replied, because there like wasn't any. It wasn't really about that. Now the model has taken to TikTok to reveal that she hasn't actually had sex in two years. So it is Kanye that did it. Damn. Jesus. Jesus fucking ended up not fucking this chick into celibacy, dude. That's got to that I I could only imagine what happened during that time. She really must have she really must have went mad with his bullshit. So she candidly opened up here, scroll down a little bit so I can read on. She candidly opened up about her celibacy when responding to some billboard pictures shared by the dating app Bumble which read a valid celibacy is not the answer. Hmm. Let's see. Let's let's go down. She says, uh, two and a half years of celibacy and never been better, to be honest. She wrote in the comment section on Saturday. That That's so fu- These guys are, are like, uh, time stamping her comments. Like, as if it's that big. Let's see. Look, people in the comment section of her uh, TikTok, which, honestly, I really don't even care to, to find, uh, they're writing... Look, same, truly have never been happy and more peaceful in body, mind, and spirit. It's wild how men destroy our peace. Somebody wrote, eight years celibate, no drama, no hate. I'm finally loving every second of my life. I doubt that. I doubt that these people are that happy. Because they're sitting here, like, going on about how, how awesome it is that they haven't had sex in eight years on some random celebrities' TikTok. As if uh, she's going to read it and like reach back out to him and be like, you want to be not not having sex together? You want to be friends? Get out of here. <laughs> let's, let's go down. This comes after a number of celebrities are being open about their celibacy journey, as rapper Craig David recently explained why he has introduced it into his life. I don't even know who Craig David is. But it's it's funny isn't isn't it there's something not even just narcissistic there's something so insane like actually crazy about going on social media and just being like hey i haven't had sex in three years two years five years imagine if uh you were outside going to to grab your mail and then your neighbor just opens their door and they go hey paul I haven't had sex in eight years. And then shuts... Because that's exactly what's happening. When when these celebrities are posting these, these videos like this, it'd be just like if your neighbor opened the door while you were outside and said the same thing to you. It makes no sense. It's a it's a virtue signal unlike any other. I've I've yet to uh to see one of of uh of this magnitude. Let's uh, let's scroll down. Look, this this guy Craig. He says, in a funny way, I was like, "Wow," to myself for the moment. My creativity has been on a hundred, on a max for the past two years. So he's he's saying his creativity has gone, you know, to the max off of not having sex. Which I find hard to believe because this guy is probably gooning his his brains out, dude. He's probably legitimately sitting at home. He has three screens and ninety tabs open, all all different X and XXX and and Pornhub and and whatever this site is, and and he's got eighty different tabs and he's just clicking and and going insane. I guarantee you, this guy is, he, he's, he's running a marathon on himself. He has to be. Look at this. The, the face on him. <laughs> he looks like a broken man. He looks like a broken man. He, he has the face of a guy who's trying to pretend he's happy and his wife hasn't, hasn't hooked up with them in like years. 
which might be the situation. These these celebrities, these are not people that you necessarily want to take dating advice from. You know, these are very disassociated people. I would imagine someone like Julia Fox, who's been famous for a very long time. She's she's a little bit out of touch when it comes to to relationship advice. These celebrities, they don't have the same relationships as us common folk. You know, they got to only date other rich people, only date other crazy people. You know, because that's basically all they are. They're all insane. They're all just rich, insane ass people. So I I wouldn't necessarily take dating advice from them. But Andy, Andy brought this clip up to me, which which had some pretty hilarious dating advice. And I wanted to see if maybe we could pull something out of it. Maybe we could get some actual good dating advice out of what's being shared in this clip. But let's play this real fast. Your take. If you're in a relationship and you like a photo, that's not cheating. 100% agree. I just want to support women. Have, have you gotten in trouble for this before? Yeah, my girl got mad because I liked a photo. This came out of an argument, this take. You're defending yourself publicly on the internet to your girl. This is a subtweet to your girlfriend, bro. No, look, I love my fiance. She's your fiance now. I love her. But she's, she's watching your activity online. Yeah, and like I like her photos too. But she's one of the thousands of women that you like their photos. I space out my likes. You're, you're stingy with it. Like if you like three photos in a row, that's also cheating. That's called a like bomb. Dude, hold like on. Bomb. And you're in a... This guy's all over the place. I, he's like, if you like a photo, it's not cheating. If you like three photos in a row, that's cheating. He's like, but it was my girlfriend. But I like her photos too, but I space out my likes. There are so many rules involved with this. He sounds like a cheater. Only a cheater would come up with this kind of strategic plan when it comes to something as simple as what to like on social media. It's hilarious. And every time, I love how he just escalates and changes the story, looks into the camera, he's like, huh, she's my fiance. It's not cheating. It is cheating. This is this is fucking gold. I and this is this is funny for those of you uh just listening. There there this this guy who's interviewing someone on a subway, but it's kind of clever. He's got the the microphones attached to like the metro cards, and that's what they're using to talk to each other. It's actually kind of cool, very interesting. Let's keep playing this. In a relationship, that's wrong. All of this stuff is very complicated. Yeah, it's complicated, man. That's why you have to be comfortable in your relationship and comfortable with what you like. Do you have any advice out there for people who have been in the situation? Just don't leave a paper trail. Don't leave a paper trail? A like is a paper trail. No, hit the like break. Is respect. This guy is totally cheating. <laughs> to the poor woman who's, who's the fiance of this man, he's totally cheating. The, the first thing he says is, don't leave a paper trail. Come on, brother. You actually, but is that, I don't know. That might sound, maybe I'm looking at it wrong. Maybe if he was, if he was actually cheating, he'd be like trying not to say that kind of stuff. Maybe just the fact that he's willing to admit it. I don't know. This guy, he's got me so fucked up. He's like a Jedi warrior. I'm like, I don't know. How to take this guy. I'm like, is he a good guy? Is he a shitty guy? I, I don't know if I should hate him or like him. It, it's very, it's very, it, this has got me so intrigued. Keep playing this. Actually. But like, don't send a squirt emoji. What about smiley face? It's fine. That's, who doesn't like to smile? So if you leave. It's not like I'm telling her to smile more. If you leave a simple smiley face under a photo of a girl in a bikini, you're just saying this is a good photo. I didn't know the girl was in a bikini. What do you mean? Wardrobe matters. <laughs> Hold I up. See exposed shoulder. He's like, I didn't know she was in a bikini. <laughs> if you're commenting, you know, brother. If you're nobody just blind comments. Think about that. Nobody's on social media just leaving blind comments out there. That is ah, uh, this is so fucking funny. You can keep flying this. If I see too much neck, I stay away from the photo. Wait, what if your fiance likes another guy's photo? As long as he's shorter than me, she can like the photo. <laughs> if he's like a Matt Rife looking guy, big lips, <laughs> he's just like stallion of a man, I support it. You support I that. support <laughs> all men and all women. 
All right. You know what? Uh, oh. I didn't argue it. I agree with it. Yeah, I don't think there's such thing as too much support. Like this video. I, I can't tell if this guy has everything figured out or nothing figured out. Like he was he was like an anomaly listening to the the dating uh stuff that he was talking about going back and forth in that interview. It's insane. But I, I wanna hop into some like funnier news topics. I've kind of been into trying to find these these funny news stories. And and since we were talking about a guy who I seem to not be able to know if he has it all figured out or nothing figured out, I want to talk about a guy who I know has nothing figured out. This man has has damn near given up on life. Let's let's read this headline. It says, uh, man keeps getting arrested for the same offense and never says a word. <laughs> he never says a word. Like, we're talking, you get arrested, they say you had the right to remain silent, you watch the shows like Cops, and, and as soon as these people, as soon as the handcuffs click, click, they start singing like birds. I, I wasn't doing nothing. I wasn't, and, and any lawyer will tell you, the smartest thing to do is to shut up. But for some reason, people never take that advice. It seems like this man has written the playbook on the right to remain silent. Let's scroll down a little bit. So Hampton's penchant for standing in the middle of a roach to block traffic has landed him in jail multiple times, but he just keeps doing it. (laughs) Apparently, the 53-year-old is totally mute as he commits the offense during the police interview and even court. So this guy is silent from start to finish. A regular silent Bob. He... He keeps the the flat emotion and the silence at an all-time high. There has to be a motive for this. Is he a protester? Is he with Stop Oil? Is he with Pro-Palestine? Is he some conspiracy nut? Or is he just a crazy homeless man? Let's find out. Many believe that he's staging a one-man protest, look at that, against the traffic, but his brother has another theory. In his last conviction at Swansea Crown Court, he blocked De La Beck Street last December, just a stone's throw away from Swansea Central Police Station. This this British, this just a stone's throw, it's just a stone's throw away from Swansea Central Police Station. I, I hate the way that they f- phrase this shit. It reminds me of their breakfast, which sucks. So John Hampson's brother believes that this is all just a ploy to get free accommodation and food. He told the son that uh, apparently he's not really mute. He he actually never stops talking. This guy's brother said that this dude is a blabbermouth. But apparently he's he's just doing it to get locked up. I guess he he's just homeless. And and this man has clearly just given up completely on life. And I respect it. I respect that he commits to the bit so hard. Like there's nothing that's going to put any type of th- nothing's going to throw a wrench in this plan. You're going to let him out. He's going to immediately walk into traffic. Imagine this guy is actually just like just actually trying to get hit by a car. There's like no, there's no, oh, I'm just trying to have a comfy life. He's just like, I just want to end it all. But for some reason, the police keep arresting me and then they keep letting me out. He just keeps trying and trying and trying. He's putting like, he's putting his celly through hell. He's like, they won't let me die. <laughs> like, look, this guy is, he's, this guy has sheer iron will. He has the most will out of anyone on earth because apparently he's not going to stop this mission. I mean, because if he was really trying to get locked up forever, you know, why don't you just shove an old lady or something like that? Because they lock you up for a long ass time for that. Like if that was really his motive, there are easier ways to stay in, in the clink for a long time, my friend. Look at this. It says, 
since being first convicted in 2014. This guy has been doing this since 2014. Talk about commitment. <laughs> Look, all, all the relationship stuff we've been talking about all episode, this guy would probably make the best boyfriend ever. He would be completely committed to you. As much as he's committed to spending the rest of his life in prison. But for some odd reason, does not have the balls to do what it takes to get the job done. Look, they, the judge ordered Hampson, this guy, he has the weirdest last name, Hampson. They ordered him to undergo a psychiatric report due to his behavior, right? But he refuses to speak to the doctors. So the doctors just went on to claim that his mute status is selective and deliberate. So he's not fooling anybody. This whole mute, this uh, this whole mute game he's got going on, he's not fooling anybody. Could you imagine being his doctor and just looking at him every time? Like, scroll up, dude. This this guy, he he looks like he looks like Kingpin, like like Kingpin on crack from Spider Man. Or, or like a, a discounted version of that dude from Pawn Stars. The, 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 cops, the, the cops are like trying to question him. They're like, dude, all right, you're going to spend uh, six months in here. Imagine he breaks his silence and he's like, the best I can do is one year. He's like, we need to push it back. He like Pawn Stars when he's like trying to haggle to spend more time in there. This guy looks insane. So imagine being the doctor and just staring at this face and being like, come on, man, give me something. And he's just staring at you, looking like a fucking thumb, not saying anything. Yeah, I mean, these homeless, they come in all shapes and sizes. You got this guy mute, which is, I'm not going to lie, if it, and if you're going to have a homeless encounter, Having one where the guy is just standing in the road and not saying anything is is more than likely the best case scenario that you could possibly wish for, right? Because nine times out of ten, you run into a homeless guy, crazy homeless guy like this. It ain't going to go that way. And that's in England. You know what I mean? That's a, that's a, a, different, a different type of homeless. Here in America, we got that real homeless. We got that OG homeless, the ones that don't fuck around. None of that, none of that Silent Bob bullshit. I wanted to bring up this video because once again we're in the funny news section, and this shit had me in stitches, dude. Andy, give this video a play real quick. I would like to see the sign that says no hammocks. We got, we got a whole. Where's list the no hammock sign? Homeless. <laughs> no, 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 I can't there. see you. You can't see me. You don't come on that. I'm not here. Call the police. Oh, no. No. Oh my god. No. Oh my god. 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 Oh my Show me the sign that says no hammocks, right? So if that's a context clue, you know, that's as good of a context clue as I've ever heard. You know, so basically this this crazy person, I don't know if he's homeless or not, but he's on a, a what I would imagine to be a New York uh, bus, New York transit bus, and he's got the hammock stretched across uh, the bars of the bus, and he's just in that. And it's one of those, like, those hippie hammocks that you get in and you could like really cocoon in and spin yourself all around. And I'm not going to lie. If I was, if I was on my way to work, oh man, I would have been, dude, this guy would have been like a guitar string. I would have been yanking his, I would have been like, get the fuck off of the thing, dude. I would have been going crazy, dude. Holding up the, the, the damn bus like that. But I'm not gonna lie, it is hilarious. Let let's keep playing this. This is great. I'm not gonna end it, Connor. Oh, wow. Look, you see him? He got oh, kicked. Wow. Oh my god. Oh, the... Come on, just just drive the bus. Dude, just got places to go. I don't think we can. Can you get down so we can get where we're going, please? Oh,
Look at this guy. Dude, I love that. He's like, there's AC in here. I got snacks. He's like, I could do this all day. Driving the hammock. Dude, that is that is just good old. That has to be New York. That has to be New York. There can be no other. There is no other. That is definitely New York City. Let's see what else we got in funny news. It, 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 this This woman... Uh, she she was doing DoorDash or, you know, whatever, e Uber Eats, whatever, delivering groceries. And she didn't get a tip. And I kind of wanted to play this. I want, I'll, I'll leave it to you guys to decide whether she's in the right or the wrong and how she handled not getting her tip. Let, let's give this a play real quick. So, I don't know what to tell you. But I'm going to be sitting this back so you can get another delivery. No, I'm going to be getting my money back. Go Try ahead, calling the get your cops. Money back. Go ahead. I, and then you'll get arrested for I don't stealing. Care. Go ahead and call the cops. What? Come on. Where's your phone? Come on. Bring it up. Are you Go ahead and call them. That like, at this point, I don't care. You are so spoiled. No one would want to tip you in the first place. No, I actually get tons no. of tips. I is, get tons of tips. That's all why you I'm just confused why it. you guys didn't give no, me a you tip just with this big batch. You know how big them. this batch is? I had to load them. it into my car. Wait, you're you're just just I'm you guys. Doing... And I brought it to you guys early, by the way. No. And that doesn't matter, right? No. Yeah, because you're trying to Wait, did you did you accept this order? Hold up. Pause this. This is, for one, the balls on this chick. To be like, oh, you didn't tip me. You didn't tip me. But then to be like, oh, I also brought it to you early. Bro, I'll tell you right now. If I schedule a delivery, it's because I'm probably not home, my friend. You, she might have she got lucky that she even caught these people. They could have been out doing something and been like, we need it at two. You show up 15 minutes early, now what? The groceries are sitting outside? So you might think that you're Superwoman doing this DoorDash bullshit. But the utter balls to just be like, I'm not giving you your order because you didn't tip. Yeah, you didn't tip. So we're sending it back. That's so fucking stupid. That is so stupid. But let's see. Uh, this girl's got some balls. She, They might end up squaring up. I don't know. No, I didn't even leave a tip. She just thinks that she can get something no, extra. No, I'm not talking Did about... Did you expect to be... If you appreciated my service, you would tip me, but clearly you... Why would I tip care. somebody who's angry? Who's what? I wasn't rude. angry when I did all this. Yes, I'm are. angry now because you guys didn't tip me. Well, you guys shouldn't tip me and I wouldn't be angry. Well, guess what? It's that simple. It's literally simple logic, but no. clearly you don't you don't understand no, that, you right? Don't understand that yeah, you don't understand that you don't deserve a tip. You don't understand it. Why don't I deserve a tip? Look at yourself. Look at your eyes. Why don't I deserve a tip? Look at your trunk and that's the answer. I'm taking the food back. You're stealing. No, I'm taking it back to the store and you guys will so you, you have the receipt and you're just gonna return it yeah exactly that's exactly that sounds like a waste of time that sounds like a waste of time i'm working now i to to be so petty not that i haven't been there i've done some petty shit in my life i'm not gonna lie i'm that boy i i at, at one point in my life i might have done the same shit this girl's doing but you know we all grow up uh, to be to be so petty Think about it. She has to take the, the gro if she's going to do that and commit to that, she has to take the groceries back. And then she's just going to waste like more of her gas and her time and all that just because she didn't get a tip. That's insane. So I was for a long time a shipped and Instacart shopper, which for those of you who don't know, um, that's for when you want to place orders through Target or your local supermarket. Down here in Florida, it would be Publix, right? Um, and I did that for a very long time. And I will tell you, I feel her frustration in the sense where the person didn't tip. Because as you can see, that looked like a Costco, BJ's, or Sam's Club order. Because if you looked at the items, everything was bundled. You don't get that in, you know, the smaller stores. Mm -hmm. So she was probably expecting a pretty big tip because... That was a big order, which I understand completely. 100% you're expecting a tip. But if you get there and they don't tip, you're going to be upset. You have every right to be upset. But to have the balls and be like, you know what? 
screw this. You're not getting what you ordered because you didn't tip? Nah, that's wrong. That's wrong. That's wrong in every, every sense. So now, at what point, you know, is it, like, at what point does it become the customer's responsibility when it comes to, like, paying the salary, right? Like, these tip jobs, they've gotten so baked into the culture in America to where, like, it's, it's you know, it's just, uh, socially, it's unacceptable to not tip. You know, you're considered stingy or cheap or it's, it's, it's very, uh, it's not good manners to, like, not tip, especially when you got good service. But when you go to other parts of the world, all that stuff is baked in. Like, if you go to Europe, and you go to tip your server in Europe, they would almost get offended because they'd look at you like, what do you think, I need your money? I make I make plenty of money doing my job. There's no need. We don't need your tip. And I'm not going to lie. I think that's a page that America can take out of Europe's book because in this situation, the, the driver... I would imagine, like, Andy, let me ask you real quick. The, when you were doing that, not trying to take the opposite side, because you, you you did it, so I know you're probably listening right, yeah. to me like, this motherfucker. <laughs> but when you do the job, you get paid for the ride, though, yeah? Yes, you get paid for the service that you are providing, which in, in that case, that specific video, um, she got paid for the shopping of the groceries and yes. delivering it. And then the tip is an extra, you know? The tip, exactly. That's so you get the trip, and then you get the tip if, if the customer gives you the tip. Now, the thing is, let's imagine a world where DoorDash or whatever it was that she was doing just paid her more. And then the customer didn't have to tip. So now every time you get a trip like this, you already know you're going to make a good amount of money because you're going through the trip. But now... This tip stuff, it's its gotten beyond even just this. It's almost like it's spreading like a virus. It's like every every different type of uh, sector of the economy. Like I used to work for a company that they did uh, smart consumer storage. And basically what that is in a nutshell is they would come to your house, pick up your stuff, take it, and store it in a smart facility. And then you can completely manage it from afar through an app. And then with that, you can check on your items. You can have them brought back to your house. You can have them delivered either piece by piece or all in one shot. And that's why they called it smart storage. But now, in that kind of work, they would they would add the tip onto that. And and I'm not saying that that's necessarily outlandish. It's like all of these things are expected: movers, bartenders, waitresses, cashiers, even even at fast food places. And I wanted to I wanted to talk about this one article here. Andy, can you pull that up real fast? Right underneath. So the tipping culture, you know, I'm sitting there and I'm I'm sure I have I have a very this is a very one sided opinion, right? Because I've worked in the service industry, but I was never a front of the house kind of guy. I was the cook working in the back for a fixed rate. No tips involved, all right, ladies and gentlemen. But I still I still sympathize with with the with the servers and stuff like that, because I'll tell you, as much as I'm talking shit about getting tips, I still think that it's damn near criminal that a bartender or a server, despite the fact that they get tips, can legally get paid under minimum wage by the employer just because tips is a factor. I think that's dog shit. I don't care if the server made $300 in that night for tips. That should be her business. That has nothing to do with the employer. If somebody gets drunk and they want to tip her, her, him, whoever, that's that that's the, the between the customer and the bartender. I think you should still pay them minimum wage. And I think it should be applied in all of these different types of jobs. But now... Picture taking the human factor out of that. And, and I know that might sound confusing. Picture going to a restaurant and seeing a virtual cashier. Maybe an avatar or somebody over Zoom. 
and and the restaurant would still want you to tip. How would you feel about that? How would you feel if you walked into, let's say, a chicken joint like this New York City chicken joint that I'm about to read about? And you see a Zoom cashier and right next to her is a big fat old tip jar. Nice little size. Hey, leave a tip. Tips are greatly appreciated. How would that make you feel? So let's read on. I want to I want to read this to you. This New York City chicken joint employs cashiers zooming in from the Philippines and still wants you to tip. <laughs> let's let's think about that. Let's think about that sentence for a second. These cashiers are zooming in from the Philippines. So now this goes beyond all the stuff that I just got done talking shit about with the tipping culture. This is beyond that. Because like I said, now you're taking the human element out of that. So I read on. A new restaurant chain in New York City is outsourcing staff to the Philippines, using screens with hostesses on Zoom calls instead of in-person employees to greet customers and help with checkout. The shops, which specialize in fried chicken and ramen, are taking advantage of the massive wealth gap between New York City, where the minimum wage is $16 per hour, and the Southeast Asian nation, where hourly pay is close to $3.75. This is like the, uh, this is I, 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 uh, the South Park episode where all the rednecks are like, they took our jams. They're taking our jams. I could only imagine Trump supporters are pro- would be rolling in their, their graves if they, if they read a title like this. They'd be like, they're outsourcing the good old working man's, the working man's job. It's funny how people will, like, bitch about that stuff, but it's always a job that, like, nobody wants to do. Like, who the fuck wants to be the cashier at a chicken joint in New York City? Come on. Well, let's think about it, people. Let's scroll down a little bit, because this is this is kind of interesting. Look at that. Actually, look at that picture real fast. Look at that. You walk in. I, I guarantee you this woman can't speak a lick of English. You walk in there and try to order something, and she's going to stare at you blank-faced. It's like uh like when you get a uh when you call customer service and, and you're just praying to get somebody that speaks good English. And then you pick up the phone and they're like, "Thank you, come again." And you're like, "Motherfucker." <laughs> because listen, it's not the fact that the person is a foreigner that would be upsetting in that situation. It would be the fact that they fucking can't speak English. If you're calling something like customer service, you clearly have a problem. And how's the problem going to get solved if you can't communicate with each other? And now in this situation, how am I going to get ramen and chicken if this girl can't understand me? (laughs) It's actually funny. I'm joking. I'm joking. We're not racist on this show. Scroll down real quick. I want to read some more about this. So one of the places is called San San Chicken. It's in Long Island. And a reporter from the Post was greeted by Pai, a 33-year-old hostess who works from her living room in the Philippines in the city of Subic. The cheerful remote worker said she is employed by a company called Happy Cashier and that she enjoys her job. Now, this, uh, this woman refused to disclose how much she made to the reporter, but she did say that customers leave some generous tips. They're leaving generous tips. She says once she got $40 at Yasu Kitchen in Jersey City. Look at that. So she's not even, that's that's the wild part. They said that she was doing it in Long Island, and then she also said she's doing it in Jersey City. So it's like, what is it? One day she's working this shift, and the next day she's working that shift? Like the efficiency here is off the charts. Let, let's scroll down. I want to read some more of this. Look at that. We'll come back shortly. Look, you can that that sign right there that says we'll come back shortly. You can expect that nine times out of ten when you walk into one of these places. You will be waiting forever to speak to someone. Look, listen to this. Someone quoted, I think you lose an element of connecting with someone when they're not physically there. That that was a quote from a customer, right? At, at the San San Ramen. What what he, what uh element are are you trying to get out of a, a ramen joint in the middle of Long Island? A, a ramen slash chicken joint. 
the place probably smells insane. It's like kimchi glazed chicken and stuff like that. What uh, what uh, element of of like ambiance or whatever it is that that you're you're lacking in this situation? But. In all seriousness, the scariest thing about this is the fact that people are going to lose jobs like a motherfucker over stuff like this. Like, if this is happening in a ramen joint in New York City, picture other types of scenarios, like, uh, let's say, a concession stand at a major event, or uh, a renaissance fair, things things along to anything. You know, stuff where... Normally, uh, some sixteen-year-old brat could, you know, get his get his or her legs in in the working force. That just all of a sudden gets taken away, and then in the future, people are just gonna bitch about how lazy kids are, how much they don't want to work. You know, which is funny. It's all it's all hilarious. It's all coming full circle, folks. Let's scroll down a little bit. Look, the girl, the girl Pie, who was working and interviewed with this reporter. She she says that. Uh, She's been working the job for about six months, and she covers three different restaurants at the same time. So it's not even different locations at different shifts. It's at the same time. I could imagine it's like a uh, like a security screen or something from like a movie. Could you imagine? One busy summer day, and this whole system collapses. Nobody is going to wait an ass load of time for this girl to like, like she's a a, tel- a telephone operator from the 1940s, like running the switchboard. Like, let me take your order. Let me take your order. Let me take it. No, people are not going to wait for that shit. Scroll down a little bit. They got to talk about the service, like the quality of service here. Yeah, look at that. It says it right here. Not everything runs smoothly all the time, however. A reporter who tried to order a coffee at the Yasso Kitchen in Long Island City was met only with confused stares from the hostess there see this is just what i was saying earlier you're gonna walk in and be like can i get a coffee and they're gonna look at you like you know what i mean it's like there there's gonna be nothing they're gonna not register any of that shit so he tried to order a coffee he was met with confused stares despite the fact that there was a sign on the window advertising the drink now if you scroll down you can see this photo Hold up. Scroll up to that photo. This woman is dead inside. She, she's there. You're not getting coffee out of this chick. Let, let's scroll down. I want to see what else he has to say about this encounter. So look, he asked her for the coffee. It said that there was coffee in the window. I'm sure this guy was like, yo, can I get some, the same one in the window? She looks at him in quotes and says, we're not selling coffee. She stares at this guy probably for minutes without saying a word. And then finally she says, we're not selling coffee. Maybe soon. That is hilarious. This is, this reminds me of like Futurama or something like that. But yeah, that's the future, folks. That's, that's the world we'll soon live in. Virtual cashiers, robots, cyber trucks. It's all coming. Futurama will soon be the reality that we all know and love whether you like it or not. And you, you're not going to be able to change it. All you can do is change how you react to it. So that's going to be it for this show. Once again, thank you for joining us at Lost Docs Media, the podcast. You can catch us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and all other podcast platforms every Wednesday at 5 a.m. and at 4 p.m. for video on YouTube. Till next time, thanks for watching. Oh my gosh! And hold my heart like a bomb.